Welcome to the Journey to Prosperity for All, a program where we look at, reflect, and celebrate the activities of the PBPC government in office from 2020 to 2022. With me for this discussion, I have the Minister of Public Works, Bishop Juan Edgel, here with me. Minister, thank you for joining me. Well, thank you for having me, and greetings to all of your listeners and viewers. Minister, as we started this conversation, uh, tell me, what was your ministry and your sector like overall upon your assumption of office in 2020? Well, having lost the elections and the APNU AFC insistence of remaining in office for five months, and that coming on the heels of the no confidence motion and all of the litigation that was taking place, when we got to the ministry, it was in total disarray. Um, we had to basically get the technical and the professional staff to be reoriented, envisioned as it relates to what the PPPC will do. Mm -hmm. Unapolog unapologetically, when I got to the ministry, one of the things I asked all the technical and professional and senior management people to do was to have a look at the PPPC's manifesto. And I said to them very clearly, the, the elections are over. So I'm not asking you to read the manifesto with a view of voting. I'm asking you to read the manifesto with a view of implementing. Hmm because these are the things that the PPPC will be doing over the next five years. This is our social contract with the people of Guyana, and this is what we will be implementing. Mm -hmm. So go to the pages that speak about infrastructural development, start reading about the projects that we'll be undertaking, the commitments we have made, and that is the direction that we are going. And we were able to get that uh, on track pretty well. The staff was able to get to a place of understanding that President Irfan Ali and his team coming to office, they knew exactly what they wanted, they knew when, in what time frame they wanted it to be accomplished, and they knew how they wanted it. So they were able to step into line very, very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. Minister, as you've mentioned, this government has placed significant emphasis on the infrastructural development of our country. Why is this important to further development uh, in Guyana here? Many persons have said, you know, people can't eat road. Why is that? Why is it so important for our development? Guyana would have had what I would, have, would call a development deficit. Years of do nothing or do, do little our infrastructure was in a state of disrepair. Mm -hmm. And I know you mentioned the issue of roads yeah. across the country, in every region. The one complaint that everybody would have or had, because we are remedying that as we go along. My road need fixing. Nobody came and did my road. My road got potholes. Now, that is just a symptom of a bigger problem. The bigger problem was lack of maintenance because they weren't doing anything new hmm. because the APNU AFC cannot point to one major transformational project that they executed during their five years. They inherited a lot of stuff from the PPPC in 2015, and they saw that some of it to the end, some of it misera they miserably failed to fulfill, and I could give name two, the Sheriff Mandela Road project was in the pipeline when they came into office. My team had to finish that. The Timiri International Airport, Chedi Jagan International Airport, they inherited that. Mm -hmm. My team had to complete that. So just to mention um, that. But to develop a country, you have to modernize its infrastructure. You have to open up new areas. You have to create new opportunities. So let's say, for example, we committed in our manifesto that we will do 50,000 house lots. 
people got to be able to get to those house lots. So you got to get the roads, the drainage, the bridges, electricity, water, telecommunications. You have to get those facilities into those areas. We told the people of Guyana in our manifesto that we're going to move ahead with expanding the tourism sector with our brand of ecotourism. Mm -hmm. You have to have the airstrips so that those planes could land. We have to have the roads so that people could get to the eco lodges and get to all of the various hotels that are being built. So infrastructure must be able to be in place to protect that. We told the people that we're going to expand agriculture, which means our sea and river defenses got to be in place to protect our arable farmlands, that salt water or saline water don't come in and damage the lands that nothing can grow, or, or like we would say in Guyana, nothing can bear. So you got to be able to manage and maintain infrastructure and develop new infrastructure to expand where you're going. We, we said we're going to develop the hinterland and the coastland, rural and urban. The man in the hinterland must be able to get the ferry to get his products to Georgetown. The man who's planting the back of Hubu must be able to get a farm to market access road. The person who's planting down the Barbies River must be able to have transportation to bring their products out to New Amsterdam or bring it down to Linden. We have to get the quarries so we could get the aggregate for the building of the roads, the bridges, the new hotels, the new built office complexes. We have to be able to get the roads to get to those quarries and bring the aggregate out. So I'm showing you, you can't develop a country mm -hmm. without putting in place the necessary infrastructure. You will, you will, if, you, if we want to modernize water transport, we have to get better ferry stellings with amenities or so toilet facilities, booking facilities, parking for people who want to park and join a water taxi. We just can't have ad hoc-ism or leave it and let it work out. We have to be able to do proper planning. Investments have to be made. And that's what we're doing. Minister, we've spoken extensively about those projects that are underway and will continue to develop and transform Guyana. I want us to talk a little bit about some of the major achievements that we've already seen um, started and completed over the last two years. What are some of those major achievements that you would want to explain or describe? I, I would want to start by <coughs> citing our miscellaneous roads program. Our miscellaneous roads program is where we go into communities and assist communities by fixing community roads. Mm -hmm. It's one thing to build a main highway. It's one thing to build a four-lane highway. When a man drives on that highway and he turns into his village, he wants to be able to get to his home. So we've had to fix roads that lead to schools, health centers, places of worship in the first instance. And then we've started to fix all of the community streets. And that's an ongoing process. Our community roads, our urban roads, our farm to market access roads, our hinterland roads project are some of the major, major, major successes. We've been able, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> to bring the new Demerara Harbor Bridge crossing. We've been able to bring that project from the pages of our manifesto to a signed contract for execution. We've been able to bring the Linden Mabura Road from the pages of our manifesto in two years through the procurement process. It's now a signed project for implementation. We've been able to bring the Northwest Ferry from the pages of our manifesto, just as ink with a promise, to a ferry that is going to be delivered in a matter of months. We've been able to bring from our manifesto pages household 
units for electricity using solar. We have now been able to have that signed. Those panels for 30,000 hinterland and riverland families are being prepared for shipping. Now, we've been able to talk about the quarantine river bridge. From the pages of our manifesto or a discussion of the past into an active consultancy that is being undertaken right now, doing studies and preparing the request for proposal document that will eventually invite international bidders in a private-public partnership manner to build that bridge. We've been able to take the Del Conte Road out of the pages of our manifesto. So this is what we promise. The entire alignment for the Del Conte Road has already been cut and awaiting financing to start major construction. We've been able to take that commitment that we made on the campaign trail of building a road from Sand Hills to Particle. The entire alignment of that road has already been cut. I'm just showing you that the things that we said we will do in our manifesto is being done. We've been able to take the Cherry Jagan Airport, International Airport, in 2020 from when the APNU left office, where they reduced the footprint, they reduced the size, reduced the air bridges, they reduced, they reduced, they reduced, they reduced, and was paying the same price. We were able to take that project with the same Chinese contractor and get them at the Chinese contractor's cost to put in two additional corridors for air bridges to accommodate code D and code E type aircraft, to put up a superstructure, to put in the curtain wall, to make the airport start looking like an airport, creating space for a 20 additional concession areas. We have been able to get that done. So th th that's, that's where we are. And I mean, th that is in no means the sum total yeah. of what we would have done. We've taken the Maritime Administration that had no oil and gas sector. We have an oil and gas booming, ever expanding project in our easy. And our Maritime Administration, the body that regulates our Maritime Affairs, did not have an oil and gas unit. We now have an oil and gas unit that is monitoring, preparing regulations, interfacing with the people who work out there. To, to, to make that happen. So I can go on and on and on to talk about what we had to do with the Demerara Harbor Bridge, what we did at the Transport and Harbors Department to reform. All of the vessels had to go into dry docking. Just two days ago, we were able to relaunch both of the Chinese ferries, Kanawan and Sabanto. Mm -hmm. Both went into dry docking, had a complete overhaul. We were able to do the Barima, MV Barima, be able to do the MV Kimbia. We were able to re 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 um, do dry docking and, and fixing of the MV Malali. There are some engine troubles that we're experiencing right now that they're fixing that. The new Demerara Harbor Bridge, we have, we have to go into, sal sorry, the, the old Demerara Harbor Bridge. We have to go into salvage that, get it repaired, get it fixed. We've already completely built out the new span nine. It's to get the old span nine removed because it's all broken up and damaged because of years of neglect to put in a new span nine. So there's a lot that have been done over the last two years. Minister, I just want us to stick a little bit into the aviation sector. You mentioned specifically the Chetty Jagan International Airport and, and the extensive work that is happening there. Let's talk a little bit about everything that is happening in the aviation sector, particularly relating to the airstrips and all of the other things happening in that sector. Give us an update of, of what's happening there. Well, if we start first with Chetty Jagan International Airport, we've been able to get the expanded runway that we could take in the 777s. Mm -hmm. Um, jet and very soon you're going to start seeing those size of jets coming in together carrying 300 plus passengers at a time. I, I mentioned earlier we were able to get a Chinese contractor to agree mm -hmm. to put in what was always envisaged by the contract two additional um, corridors, air bridges that is completed now. We've taken that over uh, in the superstructure. 
we are fixing the airport to be a, a, a major transit hub. And in order to, to do that, you have to be able to get the proper restaurants, the recreational areas, services that people require when they're traveling. We must be able to fit that into the, air, in the, in, into the airport. At Letem, we have done the entire runway and uh, extended it. Um, and we're now looking at putting in the terminal building. In terms of the e interior airstrips, we are going to undertake works at Ittering Bank, Carasparo, expanding the runway length at Kaichor Falls. Those are the kind of things that we are doing. In terms of ferries, we're having the new ferry from India, and we have refurbished those that have been in the route to make them more efficient, cost-effective, burning less fuel, moving at faster speed, and be able to move people up and down from, three to, from region three to region two mm -hmm. and across the island. So th th that's what we've been doing. And in terms of, of the uh, Demerara Harbor Bridge and the other important or very pivotal aspect of the Public Works Ministry that is happening right now is the Schoonard to Parika Highway as well. Yes. Um, just give me an understanding of the preparations that have already started to, to see that project come to realization. Well, the Schoonard to Parika Highway will move in conjunction with the bridge. Mm -hmm. But the intent is to be able to create a four-lane highway. When you cross the new bridge, you go into Schoonard and you bypass all of that traffic on the West Coast Road and you get all the way out to Perico with connector roads to, to, to get you at shorter distances if you need um, to do that. But that is going to be opening up new lands. We walked that alignment with President Ali. We went through, we were able to see firsthand. So it's not just a drone image or a satellite image with somebody doing some technical work. Mm -hmm. We were able to get out there, boots on the ground approach. And while we were waiting to get the Schoonard to Perica Highway completed, we have decided that we will do a crane to Schoonard Highway. So people who are coming down from the West Coast don't have to go into Vreden Hoop and into all that congestion traffic. Mm -hmm. They could turn out and come all the way to Schoonard by getting a connection done. Okay. And that's a project that has been undertaken by the Ministry of Housing. Minister, as we wrap up our conversation for today, uh, at our last building expo, there was uh, uh, an exhibition of Vision 2030, a vision that has been proposed and promulgated by this government. Um, can you tell me what is the ministry's preparedness and readiness to achieve Vision 2030 that has been projected by the ministry, projected by the government over the last few years? Well, I, I would say to you, we stand willing and ready. The team of engineers, the team of professionals, the, the team of project management people at the Ministry of Public Works, they're excited about the work they have to do. They're excited about what is happening in Guyana. They're excited that we are leading that charge in bringing about the infrastructural transformation of Guyana. So whether it's in terms of the designs, engagement of the contractors, management of the projects, getting the bills in, the adjustments in, they're hard at work, mm -hmm. and that's what's going to happen. President Irfan Ali is hard at work. His cabinet is hard at work. And the people who work for members of the cabinet, they're hard at work. And by extension, all of Guyana, we are hard at work for the building of this modern Guyana. Finally, Minister, how would you describe the government's vision for development, for transformation in all sectors of Guyana? Well... <laughs> I, am, I'm, I, I would want to start off by saying, look, the vision that we have is for the building of a modern Guyana, transforming Guyana. Potholes on our roads must be things of the past. Shabby drainage systems must be things of the past. Derelicts at our road corners and buildings that are not properly kept and places that are overgrown with bush, those are things of the past. We got to work collectively, we got to work aggressively to modernize Guyana, put in place the necessary structures. Look what we would have done in Lemaha Street mm. in such a short time. 
And now we're continuing that in the March. Look what we would have done at Vicentian Road. Look what we would have done at the Kitty Sea Wall. Mm -hmm. Look what we would have done in the median along the East Coast corridor from the Russian embassy all the way up. These are things that we are doing to improve the, the ambience of the country, to put in place resilient infrastructure, and at the same time, provide opportunities for Guyanese to be able to get into that zone of rest and relaxation for recuperation and refreshment to get back to the task of building Guyana. And, and, and that is what we will continue to do. So whether it's in Linden, whether it's in New Amsterdam, whether it's in Bartico, we are there and we will continue to work. Minister, I want to thank you for taking the time to have this discussion here on this program with me. Thank you. This has been The Journey to Prosperity for All. I'm your host, Shaquan Gill, saying goodbye for now.